The 20th century existed in the shadow of the Cold War, an ideological struggle between communism and capitalism. During the second half of the Cold War, the Soviet Union and the United States both invested heavily into paranormal and parapsychology research. This race to tame the unknown led to CIA operations like Project Stargate, Project Artichoke, and MKUltra. One of the driving forces behind this psi race was a Soviet housewife named Nino Kulagina, a former soldier Nino Kulagina claimed to have been able to move objects with her mind, or telekinesis. When the Soviet government found out about her in the 1960s, they began to run secret tests on her and others who claimed similar abilities. Perhaps this was a disinformation tactic of the KGB to get the West to invest resources into dead-end endeavors, but Kulagina and the Soviet scientists who studied her would claim until they died that her abilities were genuine and had real effects on her body and environment. So who is Nino Kulagina? What is her story? How did those who studied her explain her abilities? What effects did it have on her body? Was it a disinformation campaign? Or are these telekinetic abilities a reality? Let's find out and take a closer look at Ninel Kulagina. Ninel Kulagina is a Russian housewife who has this ability. These films of her demonstrating PK were made in a Russian hotel room and smuggled out of the country by American researchers. Kulagina has been studied intensively for more than 10 years by Professor Sergeyev of Leningrad University, who has reported on her work. These films and demonstrations are subjects of unending controversy. Is she a sensitive or a charlatan? Nino Kulagina was born on July 30, 1926, in Leningrad of the Soviet Union. Like many Soviet girls born in the 20s, she was named after the Soviet leader, Vladimir Lenin, who had died two years prior. Nino is Lenin spelt backwards. Because Leningrad was named after the Soviet leader, and because it was the second largest city in the Soviet Union, the Soviet Union made sure it was a prime example of communism for the world to see. Leningrad in those days was a sprawling metropolis and its citizens experienced one of the highest qualities of life of any urban city at the time. This is where Ninel would spend a majority of her life. Ninel's childhood would be very peaceful, enjoying the luxuries of Leningrad. This would all change when the Nazis would invade the country in June of 1941 during Operation Barbarossa. Since Leningrad was a global symbol of the successes of communism, the Nazis viewed it as one of their top priorities when invading the Soviet Union. The entire city of Leningrad would mobilize in the face of this impending doom. At the age of 14, Nina would join the Red Army, along with her sister, brothers, and father. Nina would serve in the front lines in a tank T-34 as a radio operator. The ill-equipped citizens of Leningrad were not prepared for what the Nazis had in store. Instead of attacking the city head-on, the Nazis put Leningrad under what would become the longest siege of World War II. Hitler's goal was to starve the entire city. Conditions in Leningrad during this time were horrible. The city was under constant artillery bombardment and Luftwaffe bombing runs. Leningrad lost all electricity and water supplies, causing many to freeze to death in the street. Food rations would quickly run out, and food ration carts became a matter of life or death. Those who fled from the countryside to Leningrad were not issued food ration cards, and no replacement ration cards were issued, so neighbors began killing each other for their ration cards, which allotted them 0.3 pounds of bread a day. Soon, Soviet scientists developed a way to turn wallpaper into an edible mush. Within a year of the siege, people began eating all of the pets in the city, then the dead bodies that were lying in the street. And soon after that, people within the city were kidnapping children to eat. Ninel would continue to fight on the front lines and distinguished herself enough to become a senior sergeant. Eventually, Ninel's tank would take a direct artillery hit, causing her to be seriously injured in the abdomen, a wound that would affect her for the rest of her life. After three long years, the Soviet army would eventually push the Nazis back and break the siege. But was once the pride of the Soviet Union was now a shadow of its former self. One in every three citizens, over one million people, would die during the siege. 
and those who lived had seen themselves and their neighbors devolve into madness, doing unspeakable things simply to stay alive. When the Nazis were ultimately defeated, many in Leningrad were joyous, but many felt nothing. This emotionally traumatizing event she experienced as a teenager would deeply affect Ninel and the development of her supposed psychic abilities. After the Great Patriotic War, Ninel married a Baltic naval engineer and member of the local Communist Party committee, Viktor Kulagina. Ninel and Viktor claimed that at times when she would get really emotional, she would begin to notice poltergeist activity. On one occasion, a vase slid off of a countertop and broke without being touched by Ninel. Soon Ninel began to think the anomalies were not the result of poltergeist activity, but the result of something she was doing. She began to try and make objects move at will without touching them. Eventually, she moved an envelope, and Ninel and her husband were shocked. They recorded home movies of the telekinesis, which now included other household objects. Ninel states that first she would meditate deeply and only focus on the object, visualizing it moving. Then she would feel a deep burning sensation in her core that would shoot up through her spine and extend beyond her skin. This sensation is what she claims allowed her to move objects without touching them. Ninel's abilities would begin to catch the attention of the Soviet government in 1963. Due to the abdomen wound she received in the war, Nina was required to go to the hospital often for operations. She eventually took up sewing in the hospital to pass time and began to display evidence of precognition. The hospital nurses realized that Nina was able to reach into a bag full of different colored sewing yarns and consistently choose the color she wanted without looking. Eventually the news reached Dr. Leonid Vasilyev, who was the head of the Department of Physiology at Leningrad University. Vasilyev ran experiments with Ninel about her supposed ability to sense images and colors with only touch and not sight. After multiple experiments, he came to the conclusion that she was not using tricks and could actually sense with the skin. But what began as a routine investigation around dermo-optical perception resulted in something much more complex. Vasilyev would become great friends with Ninel Kulagina. Vasilyev often defended her from the mean snarks of lab assistants, but still, Ninel was unsure whether or not to tell him about her telekinetic abilities. The Soviet Union in those days was strictly atheistic, and any attempts at what would be perceived as shamanism could be met with swift punishment. Kulagina and her husband knew that this revelation could lead to her being sent to the gulags, to being rigorously studied by the Soviet Union, or to her being mocked in public. Ninel decided that she wanted to know what was behind this phenomena that affected her life more than anything and showed Vasilyev the home movies displaying her telekinetic abilities. At first, Vasilyev did not believe Ninel or her abilities, but in March of 1964, he began to conduct secret controlled experiments at Leningrad University, in which the displays in the home video could be reproduced, convincing him she was truly a phenomena. At the annual Congress of Doctors in Leningrad, Vasilyev would risk his entire career and present Ninel Kulagina and his experiments to the Soviet academic community. From her presentation at the Congress of Doctors until her death, Nina would be a guinea pig of the Soviet Union. Vasilyev would die shortly after the Congress, and between the 1960s and 1980s, Nina would be studied by over 25 different respected institutions across the Soviet Union, including Leningrad University, Moscow University, the Academy of Sciences of the USSR, the Military Institute in Prague, the Institute of Radio Engineering and Electronics, and many others. Because she lived in the Soviet Union, Ninel was not permitted to make any money from these displays of her abilities, unlike her Western counterparts. Before the experiments, the researchers would x-ray and search Ninel's body and environment for any concealed magnets or strings. Ninel's telekinetic abilities would be observed under strictly controlled conditions. On occasion, the Soviets would bring in Arutian Akopian, a world champion Soviet illusionist, to observe Ninel, and he did not observe any tricks or illusions at work. Nina would push and pull matches, glass, ceramics, gold, plastic, and what would become an iconic salt shaker, among other materials. To prevent magnets or strings from being used, these experiments were conducted with a glass box encasing the various objects. Oftentimes, there would be a lingering effect where the object would continue to move after Nina would leave, and strangely, she was unable to perform during thunderstorms. During these feats, her electrical activity in the occipital lobe of the brain would increase by 50 times its standard resting rate. The Soviet scientist hypothesized that she was able to create energy and extend it beyond her skin, but what was causing this remained a mystery. Telekinesis was not her only ability. 
Ninel was also able to harness that same energy and create heat with her hands, allowing her to burn through rope and leave burn marks on the researchers' bodies that sometimes lasted days. She is said to have been able to sense pictures and images at a distance. She could alter the pH levels of water. She was able to alter the trajectory of a laser beam, to move the rotation of a compass needle, and on one occasion, she is said to have stopped and restarted the beating heart of a frog. That day, one of the skeptical researchers was then connected to an EKG machine, and Ninel was able to manipulate his pulse to levels nearing cardiac arrest before other lab technicians intervened to save him. According to medical reports, these displays of her abilities would take a big toll on Ninel's health. During the intense experimentation sessions, which often lasted hours, Kulagina's pulse reached up to 240 beats. She would lose up to 4 pounds in a session. She would get really dizzy and often lose her vision. She would frequently complain of pain in her spine, and on some occasions, her clothes would catch on fire. Each new group that studied her wanted to take the experiments one step further, which put a strain on Ninel, who would have cardiac problems and eventually a few heart attacks, but continued to perform for the scientists who studied her. Many in the world began to take notice of Ninel Kulagana, including the CIA. Ninel is a topic in 37 documents on the CIA's official website. These documents were created between the 1960s and 1980s, but were only declassified to the public in 2016 and 2017. They detailed the Soviet research into this field of parapsychology and many of the experiments the Soviets conducted on Ninel. Dr. Terletsky, a professor of theoretical physics at the University of Moscow, said, Mrs. Kulagina has a form of energy that we do not know. Even if the Soviet Union did not know what was causing these abilities, the KGB realized the potential propaganda purposes Ninel could serve. The Soviet Union began to allow select foreign groups to witness Ninel. In 1970, a Japanese television crew filmed Ninel demonstrating her abilities of telekinesis and generating heat. That same decade, American researcher Dr. Herbert Benson was permitted to witness Ninel. Dr. Benson would write about Ninel's heat-generating abilities. After about a minute, I began to feel a deep physical pain and I needed to clench my teeth and hit my head with my free hand to support the continuation of the experience. A year later, Dr. Jürgen Kahl, originally of Germany, would obtain a permit to visit Ninel Kulagina. He would visit her unexpectedly as to not allow her any time to prepare. He was surprised by the cordiality, cooperation, and kindness of Ninel Kulagina, who invited him to dinner at her home. He examined her and filmed her demonstrate her abilities as they ate dinner and would be convinced that her abilities were genuine and not the result of tricks or illusions. Ninel's last experiments with the Soviet government would take place in 1985. At the age of 59, and after 25 years of being studied, her health would finally deteriorate too much to continue. She would have multiple heart attacks during these experiments that convinced her and the Soviet government it was finally time for Ninel to retire and try and live a normal life. Ninel would only get two years to herself before she was once again thrown into being the subject of intense examination. In 1987, the Soviet newspaper Pravda, which was the official newspaper of the Soviet Communist Party, would publish an article accusing Ninel of being a fraud who faked all of her tricks and even accused her of lying about her military service. Ninel was heartbroken. She had sacrificed so much of her life being a guinea pig of the Soviet Union, constantly living under the eye of the state. At times, she wished she had never come forward with her abilities because of the effect it had on her health and life. In an unprecedented move, Ninel would sue the Soviet magazine for defamation and take them to court. What became known as the case of telekinesis would become a spectacle for the entire Soviet Union. The lawyers for Pravda accused Ninel of using simple parlor tricks to dupe hundreds of Soviet researchers. Ninel's attorney said that coming forward with these abilities was dangerous in the Soviet Union. The lawyers highlighted that Ninel was permanently injured while defending Leningrad, that she never financially benefited from the years of experimentation conducted on her, that each of the experiments were thoroughly inspected by some of Russia's top researchers, and that these experiments had detrimental effects on her health and ability to live a normal life. The biggest factors in the ruling of the court case were the testimonies of the witnesses who had witnessed Ninel's demonstrations firsthand. The witnesses were an eclectic group of distinguished individuals from different chapters of Ninel's life. Among them were Kibrick M., a former sergeant of the Red Army Fusiliers Division No. 268. He said, Ninel was a very modest, unattainable radio operator who all in their division loved. She defended her home of Leningrad with bravery and honor. When he first learned that her tank had been hit, he thought she had died, and didn't find out until after the war she survived. He would state, I love my battalion companion very much. 
For me, she is a very dear person. We have both left thousands of our companions on the battlefield, and I consider what was written about her blasphemy. Shoshana If, who was co-editor of filming of the State Department of External Relations of Radio and Television, who accompanied the Japanese film crew and attested to the thorough examination that Ninel was put through prior to the demonstration. She said, the film crew specifically put bright lights on Ninel to catch any deceit. Shoshana said, I can say with all responsibility that there were no tricks, none. Harutian Hakobian, the famous delusionist who by that time was the most popular magician in the Soviet Union, testified that he was frequently brought in by the Soviet government to check Ninel for trickery and that he never found any hint of foul play and her abilities were genuine. Then there were the countless scientists who researched Ninel that claimed she had truly magnificent abilities. Among the more notable were Dr. Yudi Kobzarev, who was one of the fathers of the Soviet radio engineering and physics program and one of the inventors of Russian radar, and recipient of the Hero of Socialist Labor, the highest civilian award in the Soviet Union. Dr. Yuri Gulyayev, one of the top physicists in the country and the semiconductor electronics chair at Moscow University. He was a pioneer in the physics and acoustic electronics fields and has an asteroid named after him for his contributions to science. And Dr. Isaac Kikoin, a theoretical physicist who was also a Hero of Socialist Labor recipient. In 1933, Kikoin went down in history when he discovered the photomagnetic effect in semiconductors that now bears his name, and he helped develop the Soviet Union's first nuclear reactor. All of the aforementioned people and many others testified that Ninel's abilities were genuine, and she was an honest, respectable person. For the first time in history, an official court would rule in favor of a person with alleged psychic abilities. The magazine Pravda was ordered to recant their article within one month, as the information presented did not correspond with reality. Sadly, the victory would be short-lived, as Ninel would die two years later in 1990 at the age of 63. She would die as the result of a heart attack, which many attributed to the years of strain put on her body. If this was a hoax, it would have had to include hundreds of scientists and many research institutions, but the courts, the people who studied her, and Ninel herself would claim that her abilities were genuine. Now you might be wondering what this story has to do with UFOs, and I will tell you. The U.S. Navy has finally acknowledged that videos appearing to show UFOs flying through the air are real. The U.S. Navy just made a stunning admission. Naval officials yesterday confirmed that three separate UFO videos released by the New York Times in 2017 and previewed on the show are actually genuine. They do, in fact, show aerial phenomenon the Navy cannot explain. The Navy was forced to address the footage after it was released by a UFO investigative group called To the Stars Academy of Arts and Science, which was founded by former Blink-182 guitarist Tom DeLonge. To the Stars Academy of Arts and Science is responsible for the serious manner in which the mainstream media has been covering UFOs recently. This group, focused on UFO disclosure, features many respectable people, like Steve Justice, program director for Lockheed Martin, Luis Elizondo, who ran the Pentagon UFO investigation program, and Chris Herndon, former deputy assistant to the president and director of White House Information Technology, among others. One person who always stood out to me on To the Stars was Dr. Hal Pudoff, who ran the CIA remote viewing program Project Stargate for over 20 years. What were these men from Lockheed Martin? the Pentagon, and the White House, doing associating themselves with Dr. Hal Pudoff. I wanted to do a video on Dr. Hal Pudoff and Project Stargate, so I began researching the psychic arms race that occurred during the Cold War, and eventually found Ninel Kulagina, who helped start the race. Tom has said on multiple occasions that his advisors told him there are anomalous aspects to our reality that will seem like magic to people, but that are just as natural as cell division or gravity. The fiction books Secret Machines are released by To The Stars Academy, and Tom says that his advisors helped him fill these books with UFO and anomalous subject matter as one aspect of a multi-layered UFO disclosure that we are in the middle of. I do not think that it is a coincidence that the CIA released their Kulagina files during this time. In the second Secret Machines book, it is revealed that the US government has deep underground bases dedicated to reverse engineering crashed UFOs and also to researching telekinesis and other psychic abilities. One of the characters in that book practices telekinesis on the salt shaker, which I think is a nod to Nino Kulagina. It is easy to dismiss all of this as fantasy, but when you compare this to the bigger picture as a whole, and what To The Stars Academy has accomplished regarding changing the public consciousness on UFOs, 
it makes you wonder if these telekinetic abilities are a reality.